Great. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Urbanfree Library will come to order. Uh, tonight, we have five people here in person, and we have three people who are joining us by phone due to sickness and a family emergency. So, um, why will... Three people with sickness and one family are, emergency. I'm sorry, three people uh, are because uh, of sickness not here in person and one has a family emergency. There we are. And I will wait for Becky to settle and answer to Becky. Okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath and please call the roll. We Thank you do for that. all the okay. support. Protect. Are we ready? Okay. So we are ready. Okay. Gloria? Becky, okay. did you turn on the tape recorder? Um, it is. Great. Okay. We are recording. Okay. Michael? Here. Beth? Yes. Here. Lupe? Here. Mark? Here. Okay. Jane? Here at the phone. Okay. Uh, John? Present. Barb? Here. Sharice? Here. Okay. Great. All right. So, do we have any additions, corrections, modifications to the agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. All right, second? Second. Michael seconds. All right, motion carries. Is there any public comment? Oh, everybody has to say aye. Oh, <laughs> I'm saying, hey, we can skip the Zoom thing. I'm being a little too efficient. Okay, if all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? No, all right. Now the motion carries very nicely. Thank you. Um, looks like there is no public for commenting, so we'll move ahead to the presentations. Uh, Celeste, would you like to do the introduction? Yes, I would like to introduce you all to um, the new circulation manager, Gretchen Madsen Webb, who will speak a little bit about herself. We are so delighted to have her on our team. Do you want me to stand up? Whatever you'd like. Okay, oh, <laughs> since we're all sitting, good evening. My name is Gretchen Madsen Webb. I'm the new circulation manager. Um, I am very familiar with Urbana. I actually went to grad school at the University of Illinois, and I was a practicum student here in fall of 2010. Um, and then I worked at U of I for a little bit, and then I headed out west to Portland, Oregon, and worked for Multnomah County, and now I'm back in Urbana. I'm really happy to be home. Very nice. Well, welcome. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay. Uh, the next item, Celeste, would you like to give us some highlights of the strategic plan evaluation report? So, so you've had this in your board packet twice, um, last month and then this month. And what I wanted to comment on at the very highest level is I hope you notice the flexibility that the staff have shown in serving our community during a pandemic, and then the growth. So um, people did not let the pandemic stop them from providing new services, reaching out, getting more library card holders. Um, Amanda has talked about how social media platforms have changed the metrics that they use, and still we see growth even with new metrics. So I just wondered in part, um, we see downloadables continue to grow. People love being able to stream and to read their ebooks and listen to their e audiobooks. So are there any particular questions or comments? Again, we see this as a very positive time for us, even though it is a pandemic, people are really making use of the library. I think when I read over, I was kind of blown away by how much everyone's been able to accomplish even in this pandemic environment. And I was thinking of all the goals that were set and the progress that we've been able to make in each of these goal areas. And I think when the pandemic started, um, I would not have anticipated we would have been able to do so much. So that's a big tribute to the staff, everyone. So thank you for all your hard work. Anyone else, any comments, questions? And yeah, I love the metrics. Love everything, just really looking very positive. To those people on the phone, I was just pointing to Amanda for all her hard work in pulling this together and acknowledging her visually, so sharing the visual with you. Great. There's no other questions and comments. Let's move on to 7.2. Celeste, you gave us a lovely handout. Would you like to talk about the library structure? So I'm going to come over here. Um, John and Barbara and Jane, you've got the handout. Cerise, I will email you the handout later. And other people have a hand out here in, in um, person. I'm going to talk about organizational structure of the library, which we've talked about in pieces and parts. But I just want to point out, um, talking about flexibility and growth, 
we've been very intentional, and I'm going to unmask because I'm far enough away right now. Um, and hopefully, if you can't hear me on the phone, let me know, and I will speak up even more. We've been very intentional in our work and being responsive to the community's needs. Sir, Jeff, say that again. So then what I will do is if someone else can forward the slides for me and I can actually just stand by the phones. Oh, that's probably a good I'll just I'll just come over to the middle. Good idea. Good thinking, John. That makes a lot more sense. So if anyone is ever interested, John, is this better? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, Great. Oh, good. Thank you. So if you're ever interested in looking at our most current org chart, it's actually going to be on our website. We've got that Your Right to Know page, and from there we have a FOIA page in which the library has to um, list commonly asked kinds of questions. What is the budget? And one of the commonly asked questions is, what is your organizational structure? So on our FOIA page, you'll find our most current org chart. And Amanda has forwarded us to um, the first view of the org chart from March of last year. So just a year ago, this is what the org chart looked like. And so what you can see if you look at your handout is that the Associate Director Dawn had th these departments reporting to her. IT, Acquisitions, and Circulation. And in Circulation, the Circulation Clerks reported to her directly. And she also had the cafe and volunteer manager reporting to her, and she handles HR. So that's a lot of different people, including, again, like 16 circulation clerks and managers and then her own work. So um, in my side of the org chart, I have the director of adult and youth services, the director of development and promotion at that time, the director of the Champaign County Historical Archives, a to-be-hired facilities manager, so I was doing the facilities position with help from my colleagues, security staff person to be hired, so managing that with great help by Rachel Fuller, who spent a lot of time helping with facilities, I'm sorry, with um, security and safety concerns, um, supervising Becky, and then doing the finance pieces myself. So what we were looking to do is um, streamline the work of it and disseminate it differently while giving opportunities to staff who wanted to grow in, in their professional life at the library. So we wanted to provide um, the growth and then be more efficient because sometimes we found that we were having multiple meetings across departments when if we streamline things we could cut it down to one meeting not three necessarily. So if you go to the next slide we're going to talk about development and promotion. On the left you see when we had development and promotion the programming outreach manager, outreach manager um, Lauren, was located in the Adult and New Services Department, and she managed programming outreach across Adult and New Services, circulation, and also the archives. So she she facilitated it across the different departments. But we found that a lot of her work involved development and promotion. So um, Amanda and others had a great idea to have uh, Rachel had the great idea to have Lauren move her position into community engagement and that saved a lot of time and multiple conversations and so the slide on the right shows you what that shift looked like so with rachel not supervising programming outreach across the system she had the capacity to go to the next slide and there's an alignment between the acquisition staff functions and the adult and new services functions there's great affinity because um, acquisitions orders the materials that adult and new services staff select. They, they catalog the items, they stamp and sticker them, they work closely with the librarians to make sure that the collections are being processed in a way that we think will um, be most appealing and accessible to our patrons. And then also, um, as the items leave, they come from adult and new services and then they are um, processed out of the library as well. So it made a lot of sense and there was great interest in having the acquisitions department then report to Rachel and not report to Dawn. So that freed up some capacity that Dawn had to spend more time working on HR issues as we were in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> so that was really helpful to have her be free um, to do some of that work. So um, you will notice if you go to the next slide, which is safety staff. So there's, there's more boxes here that you can see because this is a place where um, Donica who is the director of the Champaign County Historical Archives, 
when she was hired just before the pandemic started to be the director of the archives. She uh, was going to focus primarily on the archives first, get her feet wet, get settled, and then we were going to look at what is another role in the library to play to make her position not just the manager of the archives, but also a director level. And then there was the pandemic, and so she took on lots of directorial roles um, in that context. She took on the um, leading our team with the testing that we have with the city and through the Champaign County uh, Public Health um, Department, CU PhD, and so she took on great leadership roles in there, but she came and said, you know, I feel like in 2021, I've been here over a year, pandemic's been raging for about a year, I've got some space. So she had taken on some responsibility with Brian Robertson with equity, di divert, um, equity diversity, and inclusion. We have changed the order that we put them in. And um, she said, I'd like to take a more responsibility. I have experience and interest in working with the safety staff person. So I said, that is awesome. And Rachel, did you say the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> So we were delighted that Donica said, please move the, the security person over to um, my part of the org chart. I'll take responsibility for honing in on what the job description should be. We knew we wanted that person to be people focused, not just you need to follow the rules, but really engaging the public, getting to know people, especially the teens and adults who are here regularly, and looking forward to people being in here more regularly looking to the future and looking at those uh, kind of social work functions that we can provide without being social workers, creating ways that we could provide resources to people because we know if you are not following the rules of behavior, there might be reasons underlying that and how can we get people to help that they need. So she reconceptualized the position and we posted it and hired a person who started two weeks ago. So we are excited about that. Um, while this was happening, we also had our full-time IT manager, um, Drew Kenton, got another job full-time, stayed on with us as an hourly employee, while Dawn and Drew worked to set up our manu managed service provider relationship, which we approved a few months back. So we now have consistency in how our system administration is happening. We could lose staff, we still have their company. It's a, it's a good price for us, it's good value, it's consistency, and they have expertise and keep up to date in ways we just can't at an institution our size. So, so that was happening at the same time. Also, um, management team members including Eleanor and Lauren and Rachel and Donica were thinking about how other libraries were functioning. How are other libraries doing their business? What are trends that we're seeing? And do any of them trend, any of those trends look like they might work for us? So people stepped up and took a look around. Amanda had some great places that we could take a look at to see as we continue to grow and change, what are places that we could use as models and what parts of that could work for us. So um, you know that Eleanor Brown gave notice. We tried to hire, separate issue, sorry. We tried to hire a part-time safety person and it was a failed search with a part-time position. People were looking more for full-time work, but we don't have a need for a full-time safety person. Eleanor Brown gave notice. Eleanor is in charge of the cafe, volunteers, and shelvers. And so as we met with staff to get their feedback about Eleanor's position in circulation and volunteers and cafe and how that all works in our institution, we got the feedback that that's a really darn big job. And maybe we can split that up in different ways. So given the work that the management team had done, looking at different models, we decided to create a new position, which was new for us. A circulation manager supervises all of circulation. So you've got the chart on the top and the chart on the bottom. What you're gonna see is the circulation manager position on the bottom circulate, um, supervises all of circulation, not just the clerks, which means Dawn doesn't have 16 individual clerks reporting to her anymore. Now Gretchen does. <laughs> And then Gretchen reports to Don. So that is, uh, uh, Gretchen can dive deep into things that Don just literally didn't have time for. So we think that circulation staff who are coming together now in a different way, shelvers and clerks together, um, under new leadership, are really gonna gel in new ways. And we're excited to see what, um, with your experience you're bringing to the table. And then Don's got more time for HR and other kinds of things, including working with me and Fred on the building program. 
So super exciting. We also hired Mike Hannon as a facilities manager, so I didn't have to be the facilities manager too anymore, which again, stuff was getting done, but it wasn't getting done as much as it might have if a person was devoted to that. And Mike has hit the ground running and gotten a lot of things started for us. So we are super excited how things are going. We've also had some opportunities for growth. We lost, to a good reason, of one of our colleagues in circulation, full-time employee. So Rachel and Dawn looked at the needs of the library. We've got great hourly employees who do not want and do not need to be full-time employees. But like the half-time opportunity. So they came up with the idea of taking that one full-time position, found some other resources in the system that were being spent, and created three 20-hour week positions. So we were able to give growth opportunities to people with benefits that didn't have them before, and that is really great. We always like to have those internal growth opportunities for people. And sometimes that looks like a full-time job, and sometimes that looks like a half-time job because that's what is appealing to a group of people for us at this moment in time. So we are super excited about those opportunities. And then the last, the last slide. And then the last, the last slide. So here's where we are now. We have um, March on the first piece of paper, and this is November on the second piece of paper. Um, every box has a person, at least one person, who is um, filling that role. We have a couple open positions in circulation, adult new services, covering our service desks. Rachel and Don are working on that. Um, we've taken up the building program again, and I'm working with Fred. Rachel and I met with him, and Don and I will soon be meeting with him on a draft that will come forward to you and the community to take a look at. We are in a new phase of the COVID-19 pandemic and are moving ahead in whatever that looks like as things are safe in positive directions and we will be nimble and flexible when things change again. And then the last piece of this is like, if you're feeling stable, um, Amanda has mentioned that she is starting her um, consulting business full time and she's with us through early November, but we will be um, looking to see what to do with that department, community engagement and with her position as well. So. What we do with these big changes is one of two things. We reach out to staff and say, here's a change. We will say, this is a change we've determined. Like we are saying that acquisitions is gonna to move to the under Rachel. This makes sense to us, but what feedback do you have? What are we not thinking about? Please tell us what you're thinking about this. And then sometimes with a change like Amanda's, we'll say, no decisions have been made. Here's Amanda's job description. Here's the department's description. What do you think? When, when um, Eleanor left as well. We put the job descriptions and department descriptions out there for people to give us feedback and we had 10% of the staff talk to us when Eleanor was leaving, which is a good number of people telling us what they think about how the library functions well, what it could do differently and where we can grow. So we try to get that staff engagement at these different levels and we try to be clear about what type of input we're looking for so that people have realistic expectations. And so here's where we're at. It's been quite a ride for a number of reasons. And again, look at all the things that people here have accomplished in our community. We're so grateful. Questions, comments? No, very impressive. Um, I appreciate the transparency, the process you put in, and especially getting that staff feedback. Anytime, as you know, there are personal changes. If staff don't feel like they understand why they're being made or they're not invited to give feedback, that sometimes uh, creates just not as good as an environment as when you give them the opportunity. So I think this is just a really, really good way to go about things. And yeah, uh, I love the agility and the flexibility that you're showing with your staff and how to meet each challenge and you know, moving forward. So well done. To my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I just want to echo um, what Beth said. This really helps us understand what's going on, and I really appreciate seeing the, the transition and um, the growth uh, and, and that flexibility to use resources. Um, thank you very much. I'm just, I was just flipping back and forth a lot of the time and thinking, like, good grief, God. <laughs> 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 but this this looks fantastic, and it seems like there's a lot of really thoughtful and hard work. Um, 
to make sure things were moving along in the prior structure, but also intentional movement towards a better uh, structure moving forward that hopefully pays off for each of you as well. So this is great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, moving to the action items, uh, going to the consent agenda. Uh, uh, does anyone have a request to remove anything? All right, and next thing, um, anyone have any corrections to the minutes? Unless that agree. Okay, well then I'm going to be asking for a motion to approve the consent agenda, which consists of the board meeting minutes of February 8th, 2022, the payroll for February 11th, 2022, the payroll for February 25th, 2022, the bills for February 8th, 2022, the bills for February 10th, bills for February 17th, bills for February 25th, fall of 2022, and the last bills for March 3rd, 2022. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Michael. Do okay. I have Oh, thank you, Jen. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. All right. Now moving to the individual action items. Um, 8.1. And all of these were very nicely described in the director's report. So moving on to the resolution 2022-06 to accept the Urbana Arts Grant. Celeste, do you want to say anything about this one? It's kind of cool. We are delighted every year with our partnership with the Urbana um, Arts Group, um, the commission, and this seems really exciting to us. We've seen very good attendance at our um, poetry programs, and there's a strong poetry community. Um, the 8.4 Resolution 2022-07 to approve a computer software and hybrid contract with today's business solutions incorporated. Again, pretty straightforward, described in the director's report. Do I hear a motion to approve this one? So moved. Okay, thanks, Laura. A second? Second. All right, thanks, Michael. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Motion carries. Last agenda item 8.5. This is the resolution 2022 08 to approve the subscription agreement with Patreon Point. Again, this was all described in the director's report. Do I have a motion to approve this one? Motion approved. All right. Second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Sure. Okay. Motion uh, carries. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Do we have any discussion items? All right. Moving on to the report. Is the report from the Friends? We have a short report from the Friends. The Friends had their meeting last Wednesday. They elected their officers who were the same officers before. Um, Farrell Newland is the president. Sharon Gerf, Vice President Treasurer, Barbara Meyer, Secretary. The Friends are planning their next uh, book sale for May 19th, uh, Thursday through either Sunday or Monday, the 22nd or 23rd, in person in the auditorium. Okay. So more details to follow, masking or other requirements to follow, depending on um, how things are like. But they are very excited to be able to have another in-person book sale. And one thing the Friends have been doing uh, as a trial and have now voted to continue on in perpetuity is when a new employee starts, um, they pay for them to get one of our library t-shirts as a gift from the Friends. And they have decided to do that in perpetuity. And we are grateful to them for their generosity. Oh, that's great. That's it. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. The Arena Free Library Foundation so I'll do the report for that if that's okay, and I might stand up here so I don't have to shout. Please okay. do. So they have every okay. Um, so last month, the foundation board approved up a grant to the library of thirty-five thousand nine hundred dollars, and this will support a variety of things, like a new PA system that we will use at outdoor events and um, author author programs that um, the foundation has also been supporting for many years. The foundation um, has several dedicated funds that will support the library's uh, collections and expand programs. Uh, the foundation also approved a series of grants between now and fiscal year 25 from the Margaret Frampton Urbana Library Fund to support outreach activities. So this was a new fund that was put in place uh, by Margaret Frampton's family, and we're so excited about it. A large portion of these funds will go towards reaching new people in the community and deepening engagement with current patrons using new tools like PatronPoint that you just approved, um, and will be a better will be able to better 
message to patrons based on their usage habits. So taking all of our data and then messaging based on what people are doing at the library. Um, all the pavers from our August 2021 Cherry Alley campaign have been installed in Cherry Alley, so please take a look next time you're out there. Uh, the snow is gone, so you can see all the new pavers, and we added 27 new ones, which was amazing. The foundation plans to continue that um, campaign every August because it was so successful. I'm going to again remind you the foundation is hosting an event April 23rd from 6 to 7.30 here at the library, so food, um, music, uh, short program probably, it's a donor appreciation event, so it's not a fundraising event, but just uh, like, we haven't gotten people together in a long time. And then also the terms of three members of the foundation board are ending June 30th. So um, we're not gonna come up with names right now, but if you have suggestions of people that might be good on the foundation board and might enjoy joining the foundation as a way to support the library in a different way, please let John or Celeste or myself know. Thank you. Thank you for it. Any more big questions about that? Okay. Um, do we have a report for the uh, Illinois Heartland Library System? Not right now. Not right now. Okay, that's great. Um, so, is anything you want to add for your administrative report? I just want to say that um, two of our colleagues were at the Pollinator Fair this weekend at McKinley on campus. And I talked to one of them the next morning, Jordan, who's one of our teen librarians and involved with the C Library. She had 120 packets of seeds. She had orders for those the next day. So the seeds are moving. We've got new donations which you saw, but people are using the seed collection. And it's, it's um, important for us to partner in the community as we do that, and we're excited. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I don't think we have any board or committee reports tonight. Uh, John, do you want to say anything? Is there any board present report? Report. Nothing report. Okay, and I don't think we have any unfinished business. Is there any new business? Okay, then with that, we are going to move into closed session. So, um, I do I hear a motion to move into closed session? Okay. You have to say, say the thing. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry? Just say the reason for going to. Oh, God, that's right. All right, we are going to go with a motion to uh, move to closed session for the discussion of compensation and performance of personnel pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 2 C L. Okay, now do I have a motion to, uh, <laughs> to move into closed session? Um, I think Sharice. I think Sharice. For uh, the Board to go into closed session for the discussion of compensation and performance of personnel pursuant to 5 LCS 120 2 C1. Thank you, Sarish. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, so let's see. Becky, roll call. Um, is that when you, I think we go in there? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, now. Yeah. Right. You have to, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Gloria. Aye. Okay. Michael. All right. Ben? Yes. Lupe? Yes. Mark? Yes. John? Yes. Barb? Barb? Maybe lost it. Cherise? Yes. Jane? Yes. An item. We're going to move to go back into open session, Becky. What happens here? Right. Oh, do you need to yeah, move back into open session? We do need to move back. Okay. First so, and second back into open, open session. Okay. So take a roll call. Yeah. Okay. John has moved that we move into open, open session. Uh, okay. Second. All right. Gloria. Okay. So now we have an action roll item. Roll call. So, oh, sorry. Gloria. Yeah. Roll, yeah. Roll, yeah. We roll call now or we roll call? Twice, I think, unfortunately. No, because we don't have to roll call for, for, for motion. We just have to roll call to bring you back into open session. Okay. 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 Michael? Yes. Beth? Yes. Um, Lupe? Yes. Mark? Yes. <laughs> Cherise? Yes. John? Yes. Barb? Do we end up with Barb or yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, Jane? Yes. Okay. We're yes. back in open session. All right. So now we've got that. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Skip over that one. All right, so now we've got an action item, the compensation of the executive director. And so the, uh, the board would like to have this action to uh, give the executive director a city cost of living increase, a 2% merit increase, and then a, a one-time uh, 
bonus week of vacation to be used in fiscal year 23. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Lupe, thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Michael. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank you, and with that, this meeting was adjourned. Mm -hmm.